Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today will be episode number two. Um, kind of my priority is seeing if the engine will crank. I got it to crank. I'm going to do a compression check on it. Um, my goal is to get rid of this engine. Uh, again, it's a 150. I think it's a little underpowered for this boat. Um, I'm going to flip the camera around, show you what I found, um, and kind of figure out the best way to go about doing it. So there has been some wiring that has been redone through here. Um, I think these are switch boxes. I think they've been replaced. There's some other stuff. And of course, it's just a regular uh, key switch harness just to engage the starter. Um, the starter's sticking a little bit. But um, when, I, when I pulled the back covers off, some of these mounts were actually broken. And uh, came across some of this stuff here. So got some broken wires in there. Um, this one's really, really corroded. So I'm probably going to have to get a lot of this wiring situated um, before we can even see if it's going to spark. Um, next thing, I'm going to uh, put a compression gauge on it and just make sure that I got good compression on all the cylinders before I go any further. And um, so we're going to get it to uh, going to get that set up and then kind of see where we're at. I was actually lucky I had to key on my keychain that actually fit this so <clears throat> so what do we got uh 80 say about 83 and again the only thing that i've done so far is i just put some fogging oil in uh down in these cylinders and i know i should be running water through it but <clears throat> the impeller needs to be changed anyways so I'm not really gonna worry about it I just want to see if it's worth salvaging <laughs> that one looks about 80 87 ish so I don't know if that's good or good or bad so far <clears throat> I'm not sure what the compression is supposed to be on these engines. <clears throat> I know on some of the, uh, the XR2s, I think, had a little bit more compression. I could be wrong. That's good on this side. <clears throat> and I kind of had this feeling because some of these studs on this side were actually taken off, and I'll show you kind of how I know this. Ninety, a hundred, hundred and ten, one fifteen. I can do this without shocking myself. at 120. So. Okay, so here's my compression from the starboard side. So I've got uh, 83, 86, 55. And as you can see, that's not 
factory bolt. You can see that the paint is chipped off of a lot of these studs, which leads me to believe that um, this head has been off and it's either been put back on. I don't know if the head gasket, um, if it's just the head gasket or, or, or what, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. So, uh, compression's not good. So not really sure which way I'm going to go about diagnosing this. So part of the problem, I don't know the technical term. This is like a water jacket. I guess this is the top part of the cylinder head that water and coolant flow through. Um, and you could tell by thermostat, so water comes in or out. Um, I think it comes in and goes back out, out through here. But uh, that gasket was rotten. And these, <laughs> so the bolts that were holding this on, here's, here we go here. So these are majority of the bolts that came through. So this actually looks like rust. Um, not good. And the other part that I found was if you go back through and look through the video, so this, this screw not even a bolt the screw was actually up and through here and none of these were tight so um the uh the one that held the uh or the two that held actually that one was that one was in so that holds the water jacket on the uh on the thermostat it kind of sits up there like uh like such like such and so that bolt was loose that was loose that one I took out with my fingers. These were loose. Um, this, these two I had to break with the uh, with the socket wrench. And these two were okay, and then these two were loose again. So, so next I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to have to take the head off and actually look inside there. And worst case scenario, it's just toast. Um, I kind of don't care either way, but I'd like to know if it's salvageable or not like i said if it had good compression then i was going to go through the rest of it and actually do the wiring and just make it work um you know it might be a good engine for for somebody else but it is an 87 probably got some hard miles on it and uh but uh we'll just kind of move on to the next step and take the head off and kind of go from there so i'm trying to assess this situation uh, i'm trying to take the actual head off i've gotten about this far these came out pretty easy. These weren't bad. That was okay. That was okay. That one was a pain in the ass. It stuck. That one was a little tight. And these two, I got them to break loose, but man, they are tight. Let me show you this one here. So, it actually looks like it's taken part of the metal. You can see where it twisted the threads. I'm not really sure what happened or what was in there never seen anything like that so you can see look at the threads so um, that was held on by this piece I'm not really sure the technical name for that but that's where that is and so inside of that was this little damper and actually went like this I don't know some sort of pressure relief thing when I took that plate off this thing just pretty much just fell apart I don't know what it does but I'll figure that out later so currently working on getting these two just uh taking some pb blaster and letting it get in there but i kind of have a feeling that it's uh it's really gotten into the head there like i said i can get it Ugh. That's one I didn't think I was going to get out. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see what we find. Uh oh. So, here we go. That's what we found. 
Um, all that, all that pitting. There we go. Now you see all that pitting. The other ones don't look too bad. You can tell something, something is amiss. Let's look down in the cylinder. Look at this gasket. So the gasket itself is about falling apart. Right in here. You see that? The whole ring, this thing is burnt. It's been so hot. I don't know what that is, but that's it's not supposed to be there either. That's what they should look like. That's what we deal with with uh, 50 pounds of compression. Okay, so that one doesn't look too bad. That one doesn't look too bad. And I'm not really sure what's going on here because, so, it's nice and smooth. I don't feel any ridges or anything. I don't even see anything on, uh, on that. Like I said, all the water passages, everything looks okay in there. It doesn't look too dirty. Let's get this cylinder back up and see what beat up the head. So the top of the piston doesn't look bad. Let's see if we can move it. Uh, yeah, she needs some rings. Okay, so my guess is that she might just need some rings. Get some more oil off there. Yeah, it's got a little wear to it, but that's probably why the compression was so low. Let's see what this one is. Okay, so I think she's going to need some rings. How the hell did that get like that? That's really perplexing. These things are a dime a dozen. Um, not that big of a deal, but how did it happen? Why did it happen? Part of the ring come apart? These, are, these aren't bad. There's some pitting over here on this side. And this one, that one's got some weird, weird crap going on there too. So, let me know what you all think. Um, which way did that go? That actually went, it went down. <clears throat> but why did that blow out like that? Why was that ripped? I can get, you can tell this sucker got hot and it probably overheated. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was maybe it was part of the uh, the gap. But how the hell would it get in there? I don't know. All right, guys. So we're gonna wrap this one up for today. Um, we kind of dove into the engine. I just wanted to assess um, if it was salvageable and if it would run. Um, we did the compression check um, that uh, signified that the starboard side was low on compression. Um, we took the, um, I guess it's the, uh, the, the water housing, I guess, where the water flows, um, cools the top of the heads. Notice that there was a bunch of loose um, bolts. And so we dove in a little bit further, um, removed those bolts, come to find out that the, uh, still didn't get to the root of the problem. So we took the head off. Once we took the head off, uh, we noticed that there was uh, part of the head gasket had come apart. Um, I assume, I'm still not sure what bounced around on top of the cylinder, or I'm sorry, on top of the uh, the head, 
um, but there was no damage on top of the cylinder. So my guess is that this thing's already been gone through. Um, not really sure what happened, but it's not worth it for me to try to salvage this. Uh, my primary goal was just to see if I could get it running. Uh, running engine obviously has more value, um, but essentially this thing's gonna get sold for scrap. Um, next thing to do is get the engine off of the boat. Um, gotta build an engine stand, um, put this thing up for sale, and um, next thing that we're gonna do is evaluate the transom and the hull. So uh, I know that it needs a lot of work as well, and then uh, we're just going to kind of look forward and see what we're going to do about the repowering and the rest of the stuff that needs to be done. So uh, appreciate you all watching. Um, if you liked the video, you found a little bit of uh, information in here, that's great. Uh, give me a thumbs up, and uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and get updates as far as the progress of the boat. As always, I appreciate you all watching and uh, staying tuned. And until the next time, we'll see you out on the water.